machine stops. In the far future, humanity had retreated underground living in isolated hexagonal cells like cells of a beehive. They were connected to a vast machine. Each cell was filled with soft radiance, nice artificial air and melodious sound. It also had all sorts of buttons for people to press so that the machine could provide whatever they want. Although what the inhabitants received were pretty much standardized, they were content with it. One of the inhabitants was Vashti. She gave lectures on musical history. One day, she received a video call from her son Kuno. Rather than being happy to see a family member closer to her, Vashti was annoyed by his intrusion as she was about to give a lecture in five minutes. I want you to come and see me. But I can't see you. What more do you want? Not through the weird some machine. You mustn't say anything against the machine. Why not? You talk as if the machine is some kind of god. I bet you pray to it when you are unhappy. Men made it. Do not forget that. Great men, but men. Vashti unwillingly took the airship to see her son. They were separated from one another not long after Kuno was born, the machine assigned him to a room on the other side of the world. According to the book, The Book of the Machine, the book Vashti treasured as if it was her Bible, said parents, the duties of, ceased at the moment of birth. The airship was a relic from a former age, as people nowadays were less inclined to even step off their selves. I was threatened with homelessness. Homelessness was a term used for getting people exiled to the surface of the earth and left to die by the toxic air and a harsh environment. Why? Because I attempted to go to the surface. With an immigration permit? No, I did it on my own, entering a crack in one of those railway tunnels. Then Kuno began to talk about his escape route and how his journey gave him a lot of ideas, ideas which Vashti considered unmechanical. Kuno's radical behavior to her was contrary to the spirit of the age. All physical activities were considered primitive. Kuno claimed that he indeed had reached the surface and discovered that the people who had gone homeless were actually killed by the machines through worm-like appendages. Vashti did not make any contact with her son since then. She was even more attached to the machine than ever before. Oh machine, oh machine. Finally, Vashti received a message from Kuno warning her that the machine stops. She didn't know what the meaning of this. She went to discuss it with her friends. They told her that there were defects everywhere. The food tasted awful, the music and poetry generated was imperfect, the bath water began to stink, and there were slight jarring noises everywhere. They made complaints to the committee of the mending apparatus, and the committee assured that they will get it fixed. But the truth was that nobody knew how to fix the machine anymore. In the end, like what Kuno said, the machine, the entire system crashed. The intercommunication system ceased to function. Darkness, science, and foul air were enough to cause chaos and hysteria among the people on the ground. The death toll was rising at a tremendously unprecedented scale. Kuno, Kuno, where are you? I'm here. Is there any hope? None, and I'm dying. Is it true that there are still men on the surface of the earth? Yes, I've met them. Will they be foolish enough to start the machine again? No, humanity has learned its lesson. A stage book, an airship sailed and crashed downwards, causing a great explosion. For a moment, Vashti and her son saw the nations of the dead, and before they joined them, scraps of the untamed sky. Hey, remember to sign up for my website at Get Some Free Reviews.